All right, guys, what's going on? We're here. We're live. We're back podcasting. Welcome to a brand new Poker Live podcast. My name is Joey. Good morning, Kish Kyle. Joey, joining me today on the podcast live from Las Vegas is a man who stands to win $8 million. That's right, $8 million United States dollars. He is, uh, he somehow, I don't know how he did this, but the last time I saw him, he was on a dance floor at a nightclub, having a good time, giving the wizard assistant Jonah $200 to throw up in the air. The next time we see him, he's building up a big chip stack on Instagram. And before you know it, now he's at the final table. We're joined today by Jack Sinclair. Jack, what's up, man? Welcome to the podcast. Congratulations, man. How's things going here, buddy? It's a pleasure to be here, Jay. How's, uh, how you feeling right now, man? Um, pretty, pretty good. Yeah, medium, medium. To good. Medium yeah. to good. Typically, I mean, I, you left out, actually, we, we partied twice between. Uh, oh, I forgot the upstream. <laughs> I was so, yeah, that's true. You were at the upstream poker party as well, too. And uh, it was getting a lot of line at that party, though. Yeah, well, I mean, I was actually meant to play the main event on the Saturday, but my day one was Saturday. And then I went to the upstream party, and then we had to delay it to Sunday. Really? Yeah. So things so, could have been different. So instead of playing the main event, you like you initially planned, you went to the upswing poker party, got a little out of line too. Some heard some, some stories. Say, some would say. And then you played the next day, and now you're at the final table of the main event. Yeah. That's it. It's uh, it's a crazy story, man. I mean, I, I feel like with the main event, there's seven thousand people that play it, so you always get some pretty cool stories. But you know, you this is your first time out in Vegas, your first time ever playing the main event. You really weren't even going to come out here and play the main event, and then you do, and now I mean, it, it's ridiculous that you stand to win eight million dollars i mean just talk about the process tell people a little bit more about kind of how you got out here for the first time ever yeah i mean i wasn't even sure i was going to come i was telling uh and people i know like oh yeah we're going to go to vegas this year like let's let's sort it out and everyone was like ah vegas i mean come on let's just not bother like games are good online during the wsop like we'll stay and like phil ball couldn't come uh like anton told me no dice and then uh you know, so I booked a bunch of other stuff. Like uh, I was meant to be going to Ireland when the, the when the main event started. I had, a, had a, a like an event I was going to in Ireland for thirteenth uh, to sixteenth. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to go to Vegas. And then like two weeks later, Anton, after telling me no and letting me book like infinite stuff, goes like, hey man, let's go to Vegas next week. And I'm like, yeah, all right, chill, fine. So uh, so we went, but I'm like, okay, I won't play the main because I've got to go to Ireland. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I come out here, play a few tourneys, I'm like, holy shit, I'm gonna, I could definitely win the main. So, just decided to buy in and uh, yeah, ran, ran sort of medium to well, I'd say. And uh, yeah, we went quite well. <laughs> yeah. So, did, 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 if you cancel the other stuff, is it still booked? Did you just let it like expire uh, or yeah, something? I, I canceled my hotel for a small fee in Ireland. Uh -huh. I, I canceled the, like, you know, the event and stuff that I was going to, um, but I was free rolling that anyway. So. You know, just had to like tell the person that was uh, giving me the free roll that I wasn't going to use it. I hope that they understood. And uh, but I, I didn't manage to cancel my flight, so the flight just flew with an empty seat. Right. Um, so so it sounds like you came out here and then you started playing the tournaments, and you're like, wow, this is slightly softer than I may have anticipated. Is that sort well, of what happened? Actually, I thought it was less soft than people were making it out mm. to be. But the I sort of felt like before the main, I was sort of getting into my groove. With, uh, with playing live poker mm -hmm. because you know it's not something I do very often. Yeah, so you've been playing online poker. I mean, I know you, your buddy's here right now, and he's the one that one of the guys that got you started in poker. You know, how long have you been playing online poker? Uh, what, about four or five years now. Four or five years, like, like solidly, mm -hmm. um, like solidly losing for like two years, uh, maybe maybe three. <laughs> bang bang. Um, <laughs> and then and then like solidly winning for like I don't know six months uh, something. So you've been solidly winning for the last six months? Something, yeah. Something like that. Something I mean, I play like tournaments, that. right? So you, you're never solidly winning. Yeah, I guess that but, makes uh, sense. I mean, yeah. I feel like, you know, with obviously online tournaments now, the, it seems like the ecosystem, it's, I don't know if it's getting necessarily harder there. I know for cash games, obviously, it's just like the games are all spread out over different sites and it's more about finding the right site and instead of just playing on one site consistently. So I'm not sure for tournaments, is it sort of that way for you when you play or is it you just kind of focus on poker stars when you play? Um, yeah, I mean, for cash games, it's more like an admin job than uh, than like the uh, than the actual playing of the poker. That, that's the hassle, I think. Um, but yeah, for tournaments, I mean, yeah, I play on any site that has a decent tournament going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's like kind of tough, but really like not that tough. Yeah. I don't think like most players you play with like on when it's under two hundred dollar buy and it's uh, 
basically all fish. So, you know, and Plastic Pros, you know. Bang, bang. <laughs> what's, a, what's a Plastic Pro? What's that mean? What's a Plastic Pro? Plastic Pro is like someone who's like, yeah, yeah, I'm a poker player, yeah? Like, and, you know, they like basically make like as much as they would in Subway or whatever. And, um, Just everybody wrote like Jack basically. Everyone except for me, yeah. That's, uh... Everyone except for you is a plastic pro. Now, now you gotta understand that I think some people, in the, and they talk about this in the chat, when they watched uh, the Jack Forehand, when they so for you guys that don't know, Jack, they was, saw that. They I think they it? did. They, they did show this did hand. Show so coming down, you know, Jack's near the chip lead, coming down the final table, and then you play a hand against uh, against another player. It's gonna the final table right now. I think we're actually gonna have him on the on the. We're gonna do like a little pot with him later on today afternoon as well too. And so you play this hand, you got Jack Four, he's got pocket tens, so you decide to, to make a rather large wager on the river, and uh, now you come into the final table, eighth in chips, 20 big blinds. Seven? Seven, I think, eight? I think it's eighth. Oh, Do you even even know? You're breaking the home. You told me it was seventh yesterday, and I looked, seven. and it was actually, are you sure seven. it's not eighth? On the big blind, I think it's eighth. I mean, look, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, I mean, you're pretty six, close to seventh seven, and eighth. Eight, 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 I'm pretty sure it's eighth, seventh, eighth, the sixth we made yesterday. We'll talk about the Jack Four hand. Talk about Jack Four versus pocket tens. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes you got to go for it. I mean, what's a jack for? Like, you know? <laughs> so you think, yeah. in retrospect, you think that was a that was? A, I mean, whether it's a good play or not a good play in the moment, I guess there's some consideration that you do have such a massive chip lead going into the main event final table, where there's such these these massive pay jumps as well, too. Well, actually, I think my biggest mistake uh, ten handed was not for betting the nine seven suited. Um, I opened two hands in a row, and then uh, Bumstein. Three bet me. I opened under the gun, nine seven suited, and he tried three bet me from the button, and it got back to me. And like first thought was like, okay, it's full of shit, and I need to fold that here. Mm. And then I folded, and uh, I think that's that's somewhat tilted me into into three betting the jack four because it was like the next hand, and it was an open and a call, and like squeezing the big blind on that is just like making loads of money normally. Uh, you know, unless one of them happens to be a station, which, you know, I didn't didn't have the read. He clearly did have the read that I was, uh, you know, maybe firing some shots here and there. Um, so yeah, I mean, honestly, I think I think I should have fought bet the uh, the nine seven suited. I think that would have that was that was my bigger mistake. Mm. Honestly, um, who knows? I mean, maybe he just calls there as well because he I think he had ace four. Uh, I don't know if it was suited or not. If it's off suit, I guess then you know. Obviously folding, but he probably just calls ace four suited, then he floats flop, then hits an ace on the turn, just like barrel off and go out of the tournament. Probably, most likely. Um, but yeah, I mean the jack four hand, whatever. Like you know, sometimes you gotta go for it. Yeah, I mean I think people on Twitter, it's kind of funny. They actually predicted the moment because they you know they know you're friends with Anton over here, and Anton <laughs> has a has a you know an infamous hand from a couple of years back. I think it was where he made a a rather uh, questionable decision with, with some of his chips too, and then they said. Oh, oh, he's friends with him. He's probably gonna do something crazy. Probably and I, I'm like, I'm like, nah, he ain't gonna do crazy. I did multiple crazy things. Like, <laughs> I, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like I was like, knitting it up and then like suddenly Jack Four. I'm just like, oh, okay, yo, no, let's let's fucking spew. Like, um, you know, I was spewing all over the place. Like, that was that was not that. <laughs> like, so I guess now, but when you go on the final table, you got 20 big lines. I don't really want to get too much of a strategy. I'm sure there's going to be people out there that are at the final table that are watching this and that are, you know, and, and I don't know how, you know. I mean, there's a lot of chat pros. I'm sure they want to tell me how to play. And, uh... Yeah. No, 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 okay. No. Yeah, no, yeah, they, 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 for sure. It's not, no. Nah, not, it's not too bad. I mean, obviously, you know, everyone out there, when they sit at home and they watch, you know, everyone's professional. Everyone knows the exact play to make. Uh, that, that's not stick pros. <laughs> that's how it always works, man. You know, but there's a big difference between actually knowing theoretically what the play to make is and then actually making that right play when you're in the moment, when you're in the heat of time. And you got to probably say that if you didn't have that play style and if you didn't have this mindset and this aggressive attitude that you might not even get to this point because that's your game and that's your style and that's the way that you play. Yeah, I mean, I think I played pretty well, yeah. you know, for the main event. Like, yeah, okay, the Jack 4 hand probably could have waited, you know, a better spot, mm -hmm. but the thing was, a better spot came the previous hand. And I didn't take it. That mm -hmm. was and that was a, a big mistake in my opinion. So when you actually do make the final table, obviously you feel great because you made the final table. But at the same time, do you have any sort of emotions knowing that you could have been the chip leader at this? At well, I mean, I wasn't the chip leader as well. You were the chip leader. Uh, yeah, we were we were pretty close, but he definitely had me out chip by mm -hmm. quite a distance. So the 
one of the things about you know playing a pot against him is that if I if he if I can get him to fold at some point, then I would take the chip lead. So the value of that is like huge. So you know it's a huge swing either way uh, playing a big pot against Blumstein. So you know I I, I decided to go for it because I didn't want to be like mid stack. You know mm. with with like um, <clears throat> you know I'd rather be really short and well not really but. You know, it, it, the worst situation is to be like a medium stack with a big stack. So it's pressure on you when there's short stacks. I mean, I, I also, my big question is, is like, how do you, it seems like you have this mentality probably going at any final table. And I think most people, they get to an, a spot like this and they they abandon that logic. I think this, yeah. is, this is probably your logic whenever you go play a final table, anytime you play a tournament. But how do you keep that same, like that same mentality when there's so much money at stake? It seems like it doesn't really affect you too much right now. Yeah, I mean, it was actually, when we were down to, I think, 18 or something, uh, I was off on the rail talking to someone, possibly you, um, and I said, like, this is playing, like, a big 55 yeah. in this spot, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's just, like, people play just as nitty in, mm -hmm. you know, when it's a $55 tournament with, like, 8K up top. You know, a lot of money, can you know, considering how much you paid for the buy-in, you know? Right, yeah. And, you know, like... Okay, k online, you know, you could be down like four k a month, and you're like, oh, sick, I could get get up. <laughs> you know, right. It like means more to them, you know. Right, but, right. Whereas like now we're like, okay, well, I've locked up, you know, half a mil, you know, and now we're playing for, you know, loads of money, and of course it was going to affect them somewhat, but like, honestly, like I didn't think people were playing that much tighter than mm. than they would in, in a fifty five dollar online tournament. So uh, you know, and and yeah, I put the same amount of pressure on people. You know, I had a big stack that's what you should do. Right. Uh, Brooke Mogul, radio in chat says, do you think if you check the turn and bet big on the river, it would have been a better bluff? Possibly. I mean, I think checking the turn would be a, a solid strategy because like that turn goal was pretty good for him mm. uh, in general. But uh, I know I, I got the impression that he, he would be kind of floating on the flop. So I was trying to follow my base highs on the turn, which I think probably works most of the time. Mm. So you know, my, my plan was to fire one on the flop and give up, and then when the when I turned the gutter, my plan was to fire once on the turn and give up, and then when I hit the rip, when the ace card came on the river, <laughs> plan was it? plan was okay. He always has ten, so ten percent <laughs> pop or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, look, it's you know, it's not the best day of my life. You know, not, so you're not trying to claim it was like. You kind of told we were talking yesterday, and uh, you said that if people knew what your screen name was online, they wouldn't be surprised that you made a, a kind of crazy play like that because you make sometimes make even crazier plays on playing online. Yeah, I think if anyone's played with me in the last half a year online, they'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're just like, okay, this don't like, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I guess now, so obviously, it's, I imagine most people are going to have been watching you play. They know your aggressive play style. Right now, you do have a shorter stack, though, so you can't necessarily you know, make as many moves. But now, when you go into this, you're going to be aware that some people kind of know this about you to, to adjust in that spot. The thing is, I always have an aggressive image. It yeah. doesn't matter. I sit down at a table, and I play one hand, and as soon as I reach for chip, they're like, oh, this guy's full of shit. <laughs> like, it's, I don't know what it is, like, it's something, like, it, I'm not joking, like, I, I get this, my image is just, is shot. It, I never have a tight image. It doesn't matter what I do. So, you know, I mean, I just, like, anyway, because, you know, people down as much as they should a lot of the time. So, you get away with shit even even with a bad image. So, you know, I, I don't pay too much attention to it. But you you know, you've got to think about it, you know, how it affects things and how people are thinking, obviously. But right. but like I'm I'm very used to playing with a loose, aggressive image. Well I think it's kinda of interesting in this situation is that you get to actually see these people, especially for a couple of days. You maybe get to talk to them, you have people that can talk to them. So you can kind of see, you know, maybe a certain player and then be like, you know, the, the older guy has or has for Jack. He what was it? Was it? Has, has John. Yeah, John has. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to get up to speed on some of the other guys. You know, I only know a couple of the guys, like the, the guys I've known for a long time. Obviously, Ben Lamb's there too. So, but I, so you can talk with some of these guys and figure out. Okay, maybe this guy isn't going to adjust as much. Maybe this guy might over adjust. Maybe this person, you know, might be adjusting how I expect them to. So it's a little bit different than an online final table where you can't necessarily talk to anybody. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, yeah, I've never played on TV before and never had like. Cards, <laughs> yeah, right. facts. So, 
yeah, that's that's all kind of new to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I try not to focus too much on like these big over adjustments because like you know they're going to know how they've perceived in these spots as well. So yeah, I mean yeah, I'm just going to try and play a, a good solid strategy and you know I hope, hope that they don't they're not like doing anything too crazy right. you know, to adjust to, to anything. Yeah, a bunch of people in the chat are asking about this. I think this is the most popular question people get every year when making the final table. It's talking about how much percentage does somebody have of themselves. I think people are, they, for some reason, they're very obsessed with how much percentage people have. I, I don't know why. They're like, if you, I want to know, does he got five? Does he got two? Does he got 100? I don't know why people love this so much, but do you want to talk about that at all, or is that something that you don't want to talk much about? Uh, 99. 99? Yeah, I saw 1%. I didn't want to go like, too crazy first time. You sold 1% to, was it? Was My it, boy, uh, Ivan. Uh, Back in the UK, yeah. What up, Ivan? Shout out. Did you charge him a markup? Uh, yeah, one point oh five. That's it. He's my boy, man. Come on. I was gonna charge him nothing, but then it was like he was like, "No, nah, man, I know you've been working on your game. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little crap, man. Really?" So I was like, "Okay, one point oh five. I so you could charge him one point three. I mean, it's the main event. Even I don't care how good. If Jonah's gonna buy a piece of me in the main event, I haven't played Hold'em in fucking five years. I'm gonna charge him one point three. Oh no." One point three, man. You wouldn't buy it. I had to break it to you, but uh, that's that's an out, out of line. If people keep saying things like that, I, I'm, I'm gonna have to start playing Nolan Home tournaments. Yeah, I'd buy. I'd buy. All right, but make sure I'd you turn up on the right day. Yeah. You see, I don't know, Jack. I missed the main event registration this year, and it was an honest mistake. So I mean, I, if I would have registered, then you might not have been in the spot, though. You know that, right? Huh? What? You think you would have? Uh, well, no. Everything just goes differently. Yeah, I get it. Right, See, yeah. you know, everything all turns out differently. So for for me, exactly. I uh, missed the main event registration by 35, 45 minutes when I thought it was one time. That allows you. Yeah. Well, I missed it by twenty four hours. So you know, but I actually got that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, who you? Uh, who do you got coming out here? Who do you have flying out here? I know, obviously, you, know, you got your friend out here right now. He just yeah. came out here last night. Got off the plane. I know you. We get out of line last night. Uh, yeah, I was watching uh, all of day seven till about six a.m. UK time, and about two hours sleep, and then got the next plane. Just last plane out Heathrow, my kids. Yeah, man. So for about thirty hours. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you know, he's your buddy that, that you guys got in poker together. I'm sure he, I can't imagine the kind of excitement and just you know, you talked about watching you on TV and seeing that, and I'm sure you have friends and family back home too. You mentioned you know on the Instagram, you're posting stories, people are seeing the chip counts. Me and Jonah are watching. Like, what the fuck is happening? How the fuck is Jack going so far here? I know. And then you mentioned the last day you kind of stopped posting those updates as much. It kind of, you know, it started maybe taking like hitting you. You just wanted to focus even more. You know, talk about that whole entire process and and kind of who's coming out here to support you. Yeah, well, it wasn't even a conscious decision to stop uploading the pictures. Yeah. I just uh, it, it once it started getting day seven territory, I think it was. I, I just stopped taking pictures of my chip stack because I was I couldn't remember to do it. Like I was so focused on the action and, and you know what, how the next few hands are going to play out and all this sort of stuff. You know? mm -hmm. And on break, it's just like you, you stand up and there's like three people like asking questions in the microphone. So um, and obviously you know like you got to you got to do your stuff, you know. So yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I stop stop the Instagram with with like no word to anyone. I know. Um, I was, yeah. So I, I guess everyone thought that I dunked it off a little bit earlier than I dunked it off. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, what, what was my chip stack when I stopped posting? I don't remember. You were like second in chips, I think, at that point in time. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it was like 50 left or something, I think. I think, I think it was so, even a little bit farther than that. So, uh, yeah, when it was going to the last day, and then you like, didn't post any updates at all. Yeah. And then uh, I think I would just say you messaged, you showed, you sent me that one hand with some guy, I think. You won at the pot. I think he he made a the pocket two. Sam. The pocket two. Oh my God, what the fuck, man? What a guy. But yeah, the pocket two. So yeah, there, yeah. there's one hand. So there's one hand I uh, that I kind of did see because Jack sent me the hand history. So it was between you and what is it? Wenzhou. Wenzhou. Wen, Wen Zhao. Wen Zhao. Okay. Yeah. So I think the flop was Ace Eight Four. You had pocket nines. He's got pocket twos. Turns at nine. So you turn that set. Ace Nine Eight Four. You bet. He min raises. You. Make a, another small race back, and he decides to ship in a pretty big chip size there. Small, I think it was blind versus blind as well, too, right? Blind versus blind, yeah. What, 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 what happened to him? Well, I'd seen him play a bit for a start. So, uh, when when the flop came down, ace 8 4, I mean, it's just like, so I have to check because, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to bet. He's, he's just going to ring, it's like a bet mm -hmm. a lot of the time. But once you check, he's like, oh, okay, cheap pot, you know, we can just check it down. Then once I bet, once I get the nine, man, we bet, and he raises, and I'm just like, okay, sweet, I can just click, and he's gonna, he's gonna go for it. I just knew, you know, like sometimes you just know. So, 
So three, three and a half K, sorry, 30, uh, 3,500. No, that's still wrong, right? What was the 3,500, yeah, that was three, 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 three. 350 yeah, 350k. 350K, I think that's yeah. what I mean. He made uh, it 700, and then he made it 700, then I made it 1.4, and then he made it 7 million. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and, and I made the hero call with the nines, and he was drawing dead, so that was nice. Yeah. The funny thing about that hand was that he messaged us the hand history and said that um, we have to guess the guy, other guy's hand, yeah. and, and, and that we had 100% equity. So the first guesses are like a two pair that we dominate, right? Right, yeah. And, but then the funny thing was that the um, one of the guys in the chat, the second guess was pocket juices. I don't know how you would guess pocket juices there. Yeah, and, and ace so, nine eight four. As if juices were like the hand to bounce out. Your, <laughs> your, 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 yeah, man. Uh, that was a pretty ridiculous fucking hand. I mean, I, did, did you have multiple hands kind of like that? Because I feel like to, to run deep in this, you obviously have to get lucky in spots. You obviously have to have some time for people do some crazy shit like that. You got to get your pocket eights in against ace four. The flop comes ace ace. It was ace ace nine. And then you got to hit that eight on the river sometimes, man, to stay alive. You know, shout to Brandon Coley. But, but did you have a lot of spots like that where people just sort of. Where they just like donate to the stack. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that, that, that's. That's one of the most ridiculous hand histories I've seen, especially this deep in the main event. Yeah, the, the nines was the biggest dono. Um, I, just, I can't really remember. Like, there wasn't like that many spots where people were just like, "Oh yeah," um, you know, just completely handing me chips. Although I, I mean, I did play with Mickey Craft for quite some time uh, on day four, I think. Mm. But honestly, like that day, I started with uh, I can't remember seven hundred k or something. Ended with one point four, like not that many yeah. chips gained in, on that day. So, I mean, yeah, when, when I won a hand, it was, you know, a double up. But mm. in between that, I was just, like losing, you know, loads of chips. So pretty much the opposite of how uh, day seven went. They, uh, yeah, I would just like bleed off chips for like most of the day and then just get a double up. Um, but yeah, not too many donos. Um, I, I made a top boat versus uh, nuts straight at one point. Um, right before the bubble, that was mm -hmm. that was running pretty good. Um, but other than that, I can't really think of too many. I mean, Kings versus Queens, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess that that hand, that hand sort of comes to mind. It's so weird because I didn't really watch much of the main event leading up to that last day, but I happened to see multiple hands that you were involved in that were pretty big spots. So there's the Queens versus Kings hand when you had King, and you guys were both had a massive amount of chips at that. Like that's a that was, huge, that's that a yeah. huge, huge hand. So I look at the hand, and the guy's like third or fourth in chips. I'm like, holy fuck, this is a uh, so talk about, I think it was the 10-8-4 flop, but I missed the preflop action in that hit. So kind of, what was the preflop action in the hand where you had kings and you had queens? Uh, I, I opened with kings, standard, mm -hmm. um, and he Probably. threw that. I opened under the gun, he threw that from, I don't know, mid position cutoff or something. Mm -hmm. um, then I decided to four bet, also you know, pretty normal play. Mm -hmm. He decides to call, and uh, at this point I was pretty sure he wouldn't, wouldn't want to call with aces too much. Like he seemed like the kind of guy that wouldn't want to see a flop with aces. So, you know, maybe that's a bad read, but I kind of took a few, like a little bit of aces down in his in my mm -hmm. in his probability of having, you know, that hand. Uh, and then the flop of ten eight four, and you know, I bet five million into what it whatever it was like 15, 15 yeah five to 15 something like that and then and he ships for 25 million did he ship pretty fast or was it something that he tanked for a little bit he shipped pretty fast i think he knew he was going to ship when the flop came down yeah and he didn't like hollywood you know yeah. so he took like not very long at all yeah mm -hmm. um but you it wasn't it wasn't like snap obviously i wasn't just like i'm like you know like uh he was he was pretty, quick it was, was quick pretty, yeah pretty snap really like, yeah. So you mentioned I talked about you talked about Sand yesterday, but you mentioned that you thought he was a, a tighter player, and he essentially you thought he only had queens, kings, or aces in that spot. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was snap enough to, for you to like reconsider. Like you were mm -hmm. calling a ship, but then you just like snap ship, and then you were like, oh wow, that was pretty. Yeah, that, that's kind of what happened. You kind of went to tank there. I'm like, man. I mean, obviously, I, I don't think anyone ever folds kings in that spot. You do have them covered there, so you're still left in the tournament. Uh, I've, I've seen some pretty crazy folds. This this tournament, um, <laughs> like I, you wouldn't expect it from me, um, but I mean, I had to think about it because, you know, obviously once he ships all in, it's like obviously a big decision. So I have to like consider the possibility At that he only has aces, right? right? So I thought about it for a little bit and was like, okay, no, that's not true. Like he can definitely have queens here. So I have to call. Then I grabbed a chip to call 
and it wasn't angle shooting. I was gonna put the chip in, yeah, that was and he was gonna go, and he was like, like ready to flip his hand, and he like stopped because because I, I stopped because he was doing it, and then he stopped, and then I was like, wow, you don't look nervous at all, like about this. You oh, know, wow. he looked so ready to flip the hand, like gotcha, you know. Uh -huh. And you know, and then I had to think about it for a little bit of time because you know he just looked so happy, like, and. And uh, it just didn't. I didn't feel like he'd be happy about me calling if he had three. <laughs> you know, I think it would be a reluctant turnover. Right. But then I was like, okay. I mean, I guess this guy thinks that I'm gonna be like ace ten off here. Like, you call it ace ten off and jacks. So, like, just just snap calling him. So maybe he's like sitting there going, yeah, I got this guy. You know. And yeah. Even probably he thinks wins. that you're gonna tank with kings or with aces or with also possible. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. So you yeah. might think you have jacks too. I don't know what was your image at that point. Was it, same was it a, noises, yeah. so? It was a pretty aggressive image. So he, uh, even though it's an under the gun versus middle position dynamic, at the same time he might think that you're getting a little bit extra out of line. Yeah, just with how you've been playing before. That. Well, with stacks that deep, I mean, uh, you know, in at this stage of a tournament, you you might want to flat kings versus a three bet. Yeah, versus especially from right, against yeah. a high player. Like, um, you know, not not every time, but. Uh, you know, I just I knew that my image was like so so wild that you know even a four betting under the gun. Uh, he's still not going to be like, oh, it's only aces and kings, right. you know, even though probably is. Um, so not true, guys. Not, <laughs> not true. He's, he's crazy. He's going to be four betting all kinds. He's balancing his four bet under the gun range pretty well. So well, against most people, but against this guy, I, I didn't think he was just going to just going to play like showing up there with like ace four like for the for the yellow three bet. So how deep how deep were you guys in that hand when that hand started off? Hmm? How deep were you in that hand when that like hand started? Eighty, 80 big, eighty big blinds. Man, more. that's fucking. Which is a lot in, in tournament poker, you know. Like, yeah, especially at day, I think seven. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, like, deep, if you're a cash game player, like not getting in kings eighty bigs deep seems completely insane. But as a tournament player, like you know, against a tight uh, three bet, like getting in kings eighty bigs deep can be abysmal. Right. So, or you know, not that great. Yeah. It can never be that bad. But um, but yeah. So so yeah, I think basically either it was like a fake tell, like he wanted to like. He was trying to stop me from calling mm -hmm. by being like, "Yo, I've got aces," like sort of thing. Or he was—he just genuinely thought that I was so loose that I was going to be calling him off there with jacks. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we made the hero call, and, uh, and and we spiked the king on the turn. Luckily, against uh, his. Uh, I mean, you really needed to hit that table. <laughs> so I mean, but there's, you know, you always want to lock the hand up when you can lock it up there. So it king yeah, on the turn. So wipe my hands off. Good game. Nice answer. Let's move on here. So I, li I like having a hundred percent. That's that's a good spot to be. In. Guys, it turns out when you get all your money with 100% on the turn, well, technically you didn't have 100% in that spot. But when you have 100% on the turn, that's going to be a good situation to be in. So anytime you play, whether it's the great game of Potlin Omaha or two card Potlin Omaha, Wait, obviously that's. Huh? Can you ever have 100% on the turn? Yellow. Dude, it's so rare, but it's the most fucking amazing <laughs> thing of all time. When you have 100%, it's like when you. Yes, you can. When you have set, when you set or set someone, you have the blocker like ace nine four, and you have ace ace nine. And they just have like nine nine king king, and you're like. And nine nine with five percent. Oh, they have backdoor. They actually have yes. backdoor. They actually have yes. backdoor. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, you gotta you gotta up that percent, man. Yeah, guys, we got a lot of people in the chat comments today. A lot of comments out there. What's going on, everybody? I know it's been a long time. I've been neglecting you guys. You guys know I've been getting out of line. I'm actually gonna tell a little story. So, the, the way I met Jack was we were at Excess Nightclub here at the Win, and uh, Jack was with Anton. I think you were Ishmael too, as well, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So. We see we we out there. Me, Big J, I think uh, Chance, a couple of our poker players shot to Sam as well too. We went out to a nightclub at Excess. We got the, one of the worst cabanas in the history of cabanas at Excess, right behind a fucking tree. Your, yours was only worse. Uh, no, yours was only better than ours. Yes, they had literally the nut low uh, possible section of the entire nightclub. So they're there. It's just three guys okay. standing there. I'm like, I'm like, guys. They're like, Poppy, what's up? I'm like, guys, what's happening? Where are the girls? What's what's happening here? So I pay the bouncer. How much? Forty dollars. You think I gave him two dollars? He, he gave the bouncer two bills. We don't know what the bills were. No, I saw it. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Johnny saw. Johnny saw. Obviously. I, no, so we saw, saw something else. I think the security guy also saw something else. Hence why no girls turned up. Yeah. So and then at some point in time, I go back up there and I see him up there. I say, Hey, no, let's go. We're gonna walk around. So 
I, I don't know. I don't know much more of the story I can tell. All I know is at some point in time, Jack's on the dance floor, decides to give Jonah two hundred dollars and wants to go to throw in the air. That was Anton. That wasn't me. That's what I thought too. Yeah, you was, kept telling me it's Jack. I'm like, like how that. drunk were you? I'm like, I don't think that would have been him. To be fair, for the first day when I met both of them, I, I was convinced they were just one person. I, was like, <laughs> I wasn't sure. No, the next day when I saw both of them, I'm like. Yeah, yeah. I knew. I, I thought at first that I knew they were different because I asked where both were from, and I I said, hey, "Where are you guys from?" And then they told me it's not the same place, so I know they're different. Things, right? But yeah, I forgot. Actually, you. I think you ended up taking off. Maybe you had like an engagement with. I don't know what's going on. I don't know exactly what's happening. I had to check. I had to go home and sleep. Yeah, yeah. I had to get a, yeah, a sleep match. You had to get out of there too. But and that was kind of the first time, and we were like, man. Those guys are, I mean, obviously Anton's. Anton got a little bit more out of that. Yeah, he's telling the story about it. Uh, listen, I, I'll tell the story of Anton. I'm just being toxic. I would have been fine if you guys involved me in the podcast a little bit. Why is this? Okay, do you want to go? Do you want to go? I'm saying here. We can tell the story. Never mind. No story. No story. I don't remember, like, probably three quarters of that night, anyway. <laughs> it was a great night. So they gotta understand. This was my first kind of exposure to Jack. So I'm like, okay, you know, Jack obviously plays poker. Probably, you know, a fucking insane. Uh, probably likes to have a good time. And then, so as the main event run was happening, Jonas messaged me like, he's like, dude, you see how what Jack Jack's like still in the main event? I'm like, I wasn't even sure he played poker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Jonas even he wasn't even like sure what was happening. And then it just kept going deeper and deeper. And we we're basically saying. This could be the most sickest celebration, debatably, in the history of a final table at the World Series Poker Main Event. Now, right now, you got ninth place locked up. I think ninth place is what one one million one million United States dollars, right? One million. So what's that in pounds? Like five hundred k. I think pounds crushing the USD right now. No, it's eight, close to eight. Eight fifty. Yeah. All right. So, let's say you win first place, right? And I, and we think we know this is gonna happen. We're gonna put it out there on the earth. This is what happened. What's the celebration gonna be like out here, man? Not pretty low key. Pretty low key, yeah. Like maybe nice. go soak to Soleil or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, go, maybe go ahead and open it up. Sure. Maybe go see one of those things. Yeah. You thought about being I mean, obviously, like, I think people dream. Uh, I, I, even I dream about winning the main event. I haven't played the main event ever. I can't. I, you, you're telling them, like, I'm going to foul it with the main event. I'm good as you couldn't sell at 1.3. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I think I could sell at 1.3. If you want to make a bet, I feel like I could sell at 1.3. But when you're sitting, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I might not be true. <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang, I know, yeah, I'm still playing bang. But when you think about winning the main event, you know, what, what's that sort of, what do you picture in your mind that emotion feels like or that, that just that moment feels like? Yeah, I mean, I haven't thought about it too much. You know, like, I, you know, I've pictured it a little bit here and there. Um, <laughs> a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what I do. You know, it's like, it's a tough call. I think we all go out for dinner, first off. Yeah. It's a nice steak. Nice big steaks and lobsters, mm -hmm. like infinite lobster, and then I don't know, just pop the champagne and see where see where the night takes us. You know, mm -hmm. you can come. <sighs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Much love, buddy. Much love, man. I uh, uh, and we can get some plastic crows from the chat out. Jesus. Um, you want you want to have somebody come from the chat too? No, I'm well, maybe we should do a competition. Can you do that? Well, last time I did a giveaway, people got upset at me. Like a giveaway. Like you a, do a giveaway. You mentioned a giveaway. Yes, yes, I can mention it. Yeah. So wait, well, you want to main event action? No, they they, they could come out with us. If they're in I'm Vegas, sorry. they could come out for whatever celebration it might be. Yeah, I mean, they might be late to the end. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll, we'll kind of put it up. Oh, yeah, no, like, what, what do we have coming out here though? So you said some people are coming out here tonight, right? Yeah, I've got, got some guys out tonight. Uh, my dad mainly. Dad. Um, yeah, we got, we got nice. the the Rio gave me a uh, a room for the for making the final table. Nice, it's like. Like so bad, but um, hopefully my dad doesn't mind too much. But uh, bang bang. Um, <laughs> I mean, what, is your dad coming to Vegas a lot? No, he's never been. Oh, well then, I mean, he might think that works dope. <laughs> Probably will. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, they so, get, yeah, yeah, I already gave you free. Like Listen, guys, when you guys, if you guys are out there from the Rio or Caesars, whatever, World Series of Poker, come on, man, give the guy, give the final table guys a little bit nicer room, man. Come on, please. I think, they gave, I think they gave the other final table guys a nice room. That's what I think. They, they thought they're like, there's no chance this guy's winning. We're gonna fucking give him the worst room. I, I, I think you know, maybe. I don't like that, man. I don't, I don't appreciate that at maybe, all. Maybe there's a scheduling conflict or something. I don't know, but. When when we were turning up to the room last night, we, we got to the lift, and one of the other final tablists was also getting the lift. Mm -hmm. And they're like, "Oh, which floor are you on?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, sixth." 
He's like, oh, okay. I thought we were all on the 20th floor. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, bang, bang. <laughs> wow, yeah, that is. And, and they literally, I got off at the 20, on the sixth floor, and they were like, oh, that's, I'm just weird. Later, sorry. And I was like, yeah, that is weird. It's real weird. <laughs> and he was like, there were seven people or something. Like, I don't know how many rooms they gave him, or they gave him like some fucking seven person suite or something. You know, he might have said like, hey, I got seven people, can you work anything out or something like that? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Or they might have paid something. I mean, yeah, I, he, he wasn't chatting about paying extra. <laughs> like, he was talking like they, they'd given him the primo VIP treatment. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, they should give you a Plaza suite. I don't understand why. We were in the Plaza suite. Uh, I think there was an 88 poker party there. I think uh, with Leanne with the podcast there too. Those suites. Those are pretty nice. Nice big suite. You know, that, you know who that could accommodate? That could accommodate a family of four or seven. So maybe World Series Poker's out there right now before you book that Airbnb for uh, $30,000. Maybe they can get you a Palazzo <laughs> suite for you and your friends to go out there and, and maybe have a good time. Here, yeah, so. we, we've not booked a hotel for tonight yet, so that would be appreciated. If, uh, if anyone knows um, Kev Math, get in touch with Kev Math. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll be able to work something like that out. So Yeah, I mean, yeah, somewhere that's like good for five people, I think. Yeah. Could yeah. be good, but I, I need to uh, I need to have my own room because I can't be uh, can't be getting stressed out by these these animals. These <laughs> 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 DJs. Yeah. The I don't know, man. Listen, Lori, Lori's fun. I can stay with us, man. He's like fun guy. I don't know, man. Yeah, people are. Uh, so I guess when you think about tonight, you know, prepare. Will you be priming your mind? Will you be watching a, a, a tournament court? Like, what's like the process like? You're gonna be you know talking straight with Anton, obviously Anton. I've been playing poker a very long time. We're a successful poker player himself too. So, like, what's kind of the plan going into the to, into things here? Yeah, well, I got. Uh, I'm meeting with Igor Kovanov in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Gonna do some coaching. Um, uh, yeah, primed mind the uh, Fedor's app. I, I have it. Um, <sighs> I will I've, win the main event. I've used it a couple of times this series. Um, very very useful. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. The the post post game cooldown. That's GTO. Like yeah. I, uh, yeah, after uh, especially after like getting back to a two a.m. after big day at the main event and having to get up for eleven the next day, that uh, cool down is a uh, very plus EV. Yeah, man. What's what's this like? Kind of been from an energy standpoint because you mentioned you play all night long. I played a couple. I made it to a couple of day threes or day two or day three. Yes, last year and I was just like I'm. I don't play many turns. I'm dead. I'm like, how do these guys do this? They come, they play all day long, and obviously they say main events a very long do. The long grueling process, I believe it is. So 11 a.m. or 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. to 11 p. 11 a.m. Right? <clears throat> Come on, my, my so fucking time. 11 a.m. Right to, to 11. 11 a.m. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. 11 a.m. to like 1 a.m. So then, when you wake up the next day on day five and day six, how are you feeling? Are you just like, are you trying to eat? Are you drinking a lot of water? Are you just sort of saying, fuck it, I'm just gonna try to make it through this all? Or what was your process like? Uh, I mean, you know, once once you finish for the day, it's just like you know, get get signed to eat and, and then get into bed, you know, as soon as possible. Um, and you know, it's, it can be quite hard to fall asleep after that, um, you know, because you're like you're wired, you know, you're wired, yeah, exactly. So, you know, and then in the day, it's just like drink infinite coffees and uh, and you know, just try and pay attention to the to the to the game and you know, get get focused from from you know the action, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. I remember, so I remember, um, like the adrenaline just gets you through those seven yeah. days. Mm -hmm. Like um, after after everything's done, the body will like like you realize that it was more of a toll than you actually felt throughout those seven days. Yeah, last yeah. Days anyway. Yeah, last couple of days I haven't felt tired at all. Yeah. Like day day five, I was like knackered, like really tired. Day five, but six and seven, like I was like, it was incredible. Like I don't think I've ever been that focused. Mm -hmm. uh, in my life, so yeah, it was it was very strange. Like you just sort of once you know take the headphones out, just stop looking at the phone, stop posting the Instagram, and it was like you know all I could all I could think about was poker. I couldn't even couldn't even think about anything else, you know. Yeah, a couple of people wanted to chat about mm -hmm. some of the players that were at the final table, but I don't, I actually don't want to chat too much. Well, about I know them. nothing about almost any of them, so like yeah, I I only know about um, the only guys I really know how to play are the two two French guys on my right. Which French guys? Uh, so Antoine Sweat. So so you made the final table back into. The, which by the way, I mean we got some impressive kind of. So made another final table. Ben Lamb made another final table here. Is someone else a, a former final table in the past too? 
One of the guys? Uh, Ru uh, Ruan got 10th. Oh yeah, Ruan got 10th in last year. I mean, that. I, what do you guys think is, is the most incredible kind of feat when you think about it? So Saul makes the final table you know, a bunch of years back and then kind of does it again now. Or Ruan last year gets fourth place and this year gets 10th place. I mean, to me, that, that seems, I can't even like fathom that in my mind because there's so many players, so many thousands of people to do that back-to-back -back years. I mean, that just seems fucking incredible. It is. I can't, yeah. yeah, it's just wild. I mean, I guess it can't be that hard, right? I mean, maybe, I don't know. Like, I don't know, I'm, Anton, is, Anton got 20th twice, so I mean. So. And then the other guy got 90th twice also. Back -back. Oh yeah, yeah, back-to-back -back nights for um, the new house. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's brutal. So it does happen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, guess so, the, I guess the most impressive thing probably, I mean, going back, it's probably, you know, Johnny Chan got just back to those back days. Back-to-back. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. The, obviously the, player, the player pool is much smaller, though, but at the same time, I mean, back to back winning the main event. I don't know. To me, I think that's still my number one sort of main event thing. But either, I mean, making back to back final tables. It's, 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 yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like this weird how poker works out like that. Some tournaments just love you, and other tournaments just hate you. Yeah, yeah. And it's I, like that. I, I assume you're probably playing to play future main events in the years forward. Do you think about now? I mean, this is. Do you feel like this is a, a thing that even ninth now is a life changing thing? Where you know, obviously you have an influx for the bankroll, maybe the way that you might think about. Live poker now completely shifts. Maybe you want to go travel more. How do you feel like going back? Is it going to be more online, or is it going to be something where now you consider maybe traveling a bit more to play live? Yeah, definitely. I, I will travel for like you know. I think as I'll base it more on like the place you know, like where I want to go. Like um, I don't know if I'll travel so much to like you know UK events or whatever because you know, from there. I've, yeah. I've spent a lot of time in the UK, <laughs> yeah. but uh, but you know like. But places in like Asia and stuff, and you know, places I haven't been before, I'd like definitely an Aussie million kind of thing like that. Yeah, that would, yeah, that would be actually that's actually that's a, that's a primo choice. Yeah, yeah, like that. yeah. yeah. I mean, um, it's, yeah, it just seems like right now there's so many like tours all over the world, and if you're a tournament player, which I gotta admit, guys, I gotta admit, when I came home yesterday, I was talking with Jack. I, I was I was excited, so I was kind of I was walking through my place. I was thinking, you know, I was like, man, maybe I should fucking play some, start playing tournaments. <laughs> now I've never thought this in 11, 11 or twelve years. I never said I start playing tournaments, but it does seem like right now for tournaments, a lot of really cool things happening. A lot of cool stops all around the world. I mean, they're adding stops in India now, and India's kind of blowing up. China's getting bigger and bigger too. So it seems like it's. It's, you can kind of be a destination, pick your spot, where do you want to go? So I think that's one of the cool things about playing tournaments. Never thought I'd say that. But uh, it's one of the cool things about playing tournaments that you kind of do get to go to these destination spots and spend time there. And I know many people actually don't actually go play poker when they're there, but there are some who do make the most of that experience and go out and see the town, but also focus on playing poker too while they're there. Yeah, I mean, it is very difficult to actually have a, a any sort of experience in your place when you're like, playing 12 hours a day, right? you know, like, and then you've got to fly books to like the next stop, you know, mm -hmm. two days after the last tournament or whatever. Uh, not that I've ever done that. So I mean, I'm just, I'm just hearing this. Yeah, so allegedly. Like, but I, yeah, allegedly. allegedly yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I've seen some of Vegas while I've been here, but I've been here for like over a month now. So, um, you know, you've got to take a few days off. But, what's, been, what's been your favorite thing in Vegas outside of the main event? Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Main event, I guess. Main event? Okay. Main event. I, mean, I, I, I answered the question in my mind after I asked the question, so it's I know I know. Yeah, what I mean, shout out to that place too. Uh, excess is, was was cool. You know, we had we had fun, some fun. Yeah. Uh, the upswing party was good fun. Yeah. You so so you went to the upswing poker party. What do you think about that? Like the overall turnout, kind of the crowd there and people there. What do you think about that event as a whole? Uh, it was fun. You know, I enjoyed it. There was there was like two or three girls there, um, if I remember correctly. <laughs> He's not exaggerating. Either. There were literally three single women there. Were any of them single? Um, well, I was talking to them, so yes, I think they were single. Shout out to the shout out. They were, uh, I think they were, they were someone's friends. I can't remember, but obviously, upswing party was a lot of dudes. A lot of great guys, by the way. A lot of I met a lot of the fans there that were like big fans of the pot. I mean, it was like kind of a surreal moment for me to go around and, and like you feel like a, a rock star in some ways. Guys come up to you like, man, I love Joey. What's up, man? Can I get a picture? I love the pot. I'm just like. Holy fuck! This is crazy. Like you know, I mean, it's something you dream about, sort of thing. When you start doing things, you know, like people come up to you and say, like, I walk, fall asleep in the pot. I'm like, man, this is just, like, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say. I don't know when I want to cry. I was like, yeah, I'm like, I fall asleep with the pot. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, I don't know. It was, I thought it was a really, uh, really fun time. It was really cool. It was just kind of 
get to meet a lot of people and see all the guys together in one thing. So you feel like as upswing, so obviously you're a member of the site. Do you feel like the site's helped you at all? Or is it, you know, sort of what's been like the biggest way for you to improve? Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's your group friends or, or just maybe playing. Well, yeah, I, mean, I have the lab membership because I won that rake it competition um, a while ago. I've watched one video, I think, King um, Bang. Not, not like trying to diss, but, uh, but I, I've been, I, I actually paid for the heads up course before that, mm -hmm. so I've, I've watched a decent amount of that. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's good, it's good stuff. Um, the yeah, but I, I can't really comment on upswing because I, I haven't really uh, watched enough of it. Yeah, but you know, for sure, I, I mean, you know, Doug, Doug and Ryan know what they're doing for okay. sure, and uh, you know, I think I think the info they they give is, is pretty solid. I don't know if uh, how I play the game is quite upswing approved. Um, but you know, I'd definitely make some some GTO plays. No, I, I'm pretty sure actually, Pratush put a module in the in the tournament course. I think there was one about aces in a. I think there was one about aces at a final table. I think there was one about how to play Jack Four Offs. So getting to a final table. <laughs> so I do think there actually was a module so, for Jack Four. Really? Yeah, you know, I, I paid for that as well. I know. Why? Obviously, we know you paid for that. I mean, now you're going to get aces and going to say, I don't know. I mean, it could, it could happen too now. Yeah, yeah. You never know. Yeah. But the so podcast. How, how you say to play aces? Uh, it says aces. You. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to rehash old memories. My shots for Tush, man. PLP. Uh, I love PLP. Uh, what is that even reference to? That did he? Did he make a real so, thing? I gotta go here. I gotta go here, huh? So well, you uh, brought it up, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be a subtle reference that that I assume that you would have got. So a super high rollable final table. Tush yeah. has uh, aces. Yeah. I think he made a big squeeze from the big blind. Uh, Schindler called a pocket eights. He was on the button. Uh, flop the set and uh, Pratush. I think, I think uh, aces versus eight. Thank you. Bet, 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 flop, check call, check call, and uh, yeah, I lost. And he was not good. He was yeah. not. He was not good. No. But yeah. some people said maybe he should fold and all this kind of. You know the fucking. Yeah. You know the guys at home. They, they, yeah. You know that's kind of what happened. Yeah. Well, so. you know why you should fold is because Pratush will never squeeze Jack Four off from the big line, and the other guy knows this, mm. right? So mm -hmm. the other guy can never be bluffing. Mm. Whereas if Pratush occasionally shows down the Jack Four off there. Then the other dude can be bluffing because he just floats mm -hmm. flop with whatever, and now he can bet twice, and Patrice can call with aces. So, yeah, I think that I think hidden uh, value, hidden value. Joey. I mean, I do believe in hidden value. By the way, I think hidden value is a very important concept. But the idea of, of balancing your range that wide does seem like quite a new concept for me, <laughs> and it's something I'm interested yeah, in yeah. learning more about. But I'm I'm really sick. don't worry, I'm going to be adding a little module. Yeah, I mean, are you gonna, so what are you teaming up with anyone? Obviously now, you know, people are trying to get sponsorships out there. You know, people want you to wear patches. There's the snap shove, there's reg, there's upswing, there's 888, there's 258, there's DraftKings. I don't know what the hell, there's all these patches these days. So I don't know, two, who's 258? I don't know, man. So yeah. It's like a company, uh, they, uh, you know that. <clears> yeah, well, yeah. you know, we've been talking to some people. Yeah, like, yeah negotiate, huh? Yeah, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Like tomorrow, you'll, you'll know. Yeah, you know who I know is a good negotiator? William Bishop, your countryman. Oh, uh, yeah. Of course. You can, and he's a former lawyer, too. I mean, this uh, could be, why don't you have Will, Will Kasuka negotiate for him, man? I mean, is he in Vegas? Or? Uh, oh, yeah, we, we were actually out a couple of days ago and met him in, in some casino and wanted to talk to him, and he wanted to talk to us. But then the security was like dragging him away already and telling us, like, no, no, this guy is done for you. Yeah, so <laughs> I saw Will Kasuf. I saw Will Kasuf at Access the other night with Jake, who I shot to my buddy Jake. I love Jake a lot. I saw Kasuf out there. Completely out of line. We did like a little video. He's like, Puppy, what's up, Puppy, Marvelous, all that, I'm like a boss, mother. I'm like, my guy Will, what's up with him? I like, he was turned up, man. So, Will Gassoub has been enjoying Las Vegas, and uh, but he could be the guy to negotiate a deal, man. He tried to one time uh, get money for me one time for coming on the podcast, so he might be your guy. Yeah. Well, he wanted you to pay. Yeah, the second time he's like, I think I need some compensation. I go, listen, Will. No, I never pay no one from the audience saying mm, this isn't the time to start. I'm not. He's like, okay, I'll come on. Wait, Jay, let's do it. This isn't. Hey. What? I thought you were. <sighs> All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that could be your guy, but yeah, we're going to find out tomorrow in terms of uh, in terms of who's going to be the patches that you wear, huh? Precisely. Okay. I'm yeah, excited to My name is Papi. Uh, you want to wear this hat? Yeah, how much do how much you want to pay? I will, I will not sign my hat, so I'll not pay anything. But the company might, you never know. Never know. Okay. What, how are you going to deal with all the people that sort of come out the woodwork now? You know, obviously, a lot of people are going to, you know, whether it's family or whether it's anytime you have success. Family or, coming out the woodwork. 
I mean, listen, I, I've met some family. They don't talk to you much. Uh, like, they like sort of come out. Yeah, they, you didn't know you had some Or family, family that you don't even speak too much or maybe friends or anything like that. I mean, think like something like this is kind of a public thing. Mm -hmm. We talked about media back home. This could be something where, and I'm not sure how much time you actually spend back home because I know you guys you know, live in Malta too, but are you, have you thought about that at all? Have you experienced anything like that yet so far? No, not really. I mean, just, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of Facebook messages and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Few few friend requests, you know, coming in from from people I've like met once in uh, some some random place, but yeah, um, but you know, that's cool. I mean, I have no problem with that. Yeah, I, I mean, hopefully get a few Instagram followers from this. You know, that would be. Listen, guys, you need to go follow Jack right now on Instagram. It's I don't know how to say your name. It's not easy to say. So Jack Soros. Jack Soros. Jack Soros. You know, like a like a dinosaur. Oh, oh, is that what it's referencing? Oh, yeah, like a dinos dinosaur. Oh, dinosaur. I'm kidding. I fucking knew that's what it's referencing. I thought it was referencing something else. Jack, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, Jackasaurus with four S's at the end. That's okay, Jackasaurus. Listen, if you guys follow Jack right now, I will put you in a contest to win. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> right now. I really don't have to give away right now. But listen, go follow Jack on there. They get 30% of your main event, actually. That's next year, bro. For next, for next year. That's next year. Yeah, if you can sell. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you guys something. So I don't do this next year. I was actually planning next year to give away 30% again, and I'm saying I'm gonna play day two. But then on day one, the first day of the main event, I was gonna mysteriously disappear to Hawaii and be stranded on a beach. And I still want to do this, Jonah. I don't want to do this next year. I'm tempted to do it. So that was my plan. Next year, I was gonna be on a beach with like you know, a beautiful woman, filming with and. Um, a, a beautiful woman like Phil Well, he's always surrounded by beautiful women. Oh, beautiful I thought women you meant like a woman that's right. Like I mean, listen, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not a 6'6 woman, but at the same time, I'd probably prefer not to have my woman be 6'6. Right. You know, I don't know what you're into. I mean, man. Well, it's a different story for another <laughs> time. But you listen, Vegas, I don't know. I've changed now. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. But no, that I was going to do that next year, and then I was gonna, wouldn't be able to get back in time to register anything like that. So, right. I can do that next year. So, so you'll. you'll your plan is to just make scam uh, competitions to. Wow. Is, that, is that what you're saying? No. Live? On not going to do it. No, you're not I'm not going to do that next year. So are you saying that you planned this whole. No. Oh, I missed the registration mm -hmm. thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. That was. I wish I would have. That would have been uh, smart, wouldn't it? Smart marketing. And it would be really smart to now say that you didn't mean to. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, so I don't know. The truth may come out one day. You never know. The truth may come out. You never know. I believe. Are you gonna do a giveaway? I believe you. Do you want to do a giveaway? A giveaway? Yeah, do a giveaway right now. What what, what do I have to gain? Fifty percent of the media. Yeah. Fifty no, percent. This for five percent. Uh, I love doing giveaways. I don't know. I do giveaways all the time. I I love doing giveaways. It just so happens I missed the man. I can't help. I mean, it is what it is. Guys, let's take a couple questions from the chat here. Uh, Jack, are you? Well, that's an interesting question right there. It's not actually asked that one. Guys, let's get a couple of questions. Let me give some shout outs, man. You got a shout out to anybody out there right now? I'll give you a shout out. Who we got in the chat? Well, shout out to David Castillo, Octavio Vega Orozco. <clears throat> interesting. ABC Poke Pools, Fire Flop, Turn, and River on it. All right, let me, let me, let me yeah. the chat. All right, I got yeah. the chat now. All right, who's in the chat? Octavio Vega Orozco, Colamos, Papi. Two fat mats in the chat, man. Joel Brandenburg says, who does he think his biggest competition at the final table is? Wow, good question. Great question. Uh, yeah, I haven't really got an answer. Um, I've not played with many of the guys at all. Um, the, I haven't played with Blumstein except for like that one hand. Um, <laughs> haven't played with Ben Lamb uh, pretty much at all. Don't even know the guy's name who's the other seat. Um, so yeah, I'm really preparing hard over here. <laughs> He's preparing hard out there, guys, as you can tell. Yeah, yesterday was like interviews, negotiations, you know, meetings, and today we do the podcast for the run good, mm -hmm. and then after this we do the training. So by the end of today, I should know people's names. Um, let's and have some. Hey, let's get those. Let's let's get an understanding, guys. Now before the, the battle table starts for sure, man. Uh, but yeah, I think John has probably. He's like uh, he's like my kryptonite. Yeah. Uh, I mean, guy seems like a legend, man. He's, he is a, he's clearly a legend of the game. I mean, but he won like eight out of every ten pots we played against each other. Really? Four out of five to some. But yeah, he was he was very tough because he kept flopping pairs against me. Yeah, I mean, when you flop a pair, obviously, it makes the game a little bit easier to play. Yeah, you know, good thing about Hold'em. I mean, PLO obviously he flopped a lot of pairs, and he also doesn't let you get there when he has a pair. That's a problem, right? Yeah, you so need to get there for sure. Yeah. 
you do got to get there, man. Sometimes you got to get there. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Jay Nandez in the chat. What's up, Jay Nandez? Big puppy. I miss Jay Nandez, man. I'm missing him. He was a he was an ant. You see him at the upstream poker party the other day? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, Jay Nandez he was, was. You could say. He was out of line, no doubt about it. Yeah, he was. He was very out of line here. So, we've got James Baker in the chat. He says, "I'm in Wales. Go on the Brits." Giuseppe M. David McKinnon, Poker Ra Rahas in the chat. What's up, Papi? Who else we got? George Hyo, Ian Salter, Sahil Bata. Thoughts on John Hesp? I guess you kind of said your thoughts on John Hesp there. You thought he's a uh, a guy who was your kryptonite, huh? Yeah, he was very tough. Very very tough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously, I want it to be heads up against. Uh, against John because you know there's two Brits and we can just like you know rubbing a new Americans faces but um and also you know he's a good guy to play with you know I, I feel like I can chat with John in, in hands you know like uh against guess the other guys I don't really want to give away information and, and chat but like with John it's like you know there's give and take because he chats back and then yeah you know we, we have more fun that way yeah so uh, you know I think me and, me and John heads up would be you know good um I, I mean, I would think I'd, I'd also like to play, you know, uh, Polak heads up. I think that would be fun. Mm -hmm. um, Rao, uh, sorry, not Rao. Um, Antoine, not so much because he flops a lot of boats. Mm -hmm. So, or well, flops a lot of sets, turns a lot of boats, I guess, me. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's, that's probably my picks. Yeah, picks to play against there. Okay. I like that, man. We got Natasha Melky in the chat. What's up, Natasha? Is it actually a woman? Uh, Thomas Deans says, hope you enjoy your night the other night with us. Pop, B was a pleasure. Big shout out to Thomas Deans and, and his buddies from the UK. They invited me out to XS. Me and Big J went out there. And uh, it was a short night, but we had a very fun night with those guys. Big shout out to them. And uh, man, I don't know, man. It's kind of like now. I, you, this kind of like gets you some, like you become someone who's known by a, a lot of people in the poker community now from, from this event. Yeah. And people are going to want to, you know, maybe want to know you. They're going to want to hang out with you. They're going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to befriend you. They're going to want something. And does that, does that something that excite you? Or is that something that you sort of, that, you know, not, not shy away from or not interested in? Or and what are your thoughts on that? I mean, if someone had told me, like, hey, man, you're going to be on the Joey Ingram Poker Life podcast in, you know, four months, four months ago, I'd be like, whoa, <laughs> that's sick. <laughs> Like, I did not expect this yeah. at all. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, obviously, I've been hanging out with, with Phil and Anton and, like, meeting other um, poker pros that I used to, like, watch on TV and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's, you know, obviously, like, uh, you know, I'm semi-used to it. Yeah. Like, but normally, it's, like, I'm meeting them and I'm just, like, some guy. But now, like, yeah. I'm not, like, some guy. I mean, I guess I'm still just sort of some guy. I'm now, now I'm some punk, but before I was some guy. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a. It's so funny how if you play a hand like the Jack Four hand, now all of a sudden that that's gonna that could stay with you forever, which could be good, obviously, for image wise. But at the same time, it does skew people's perception of you as a player potentially as well too. They say, "Oh, this guy's a fucking idiot. This guy's this. This guy's whoa, that." Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who said that? Hey, no, you gotta read the comments, kid. Hey, hey, listen, I, 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 I gotta read the comments. That's you know what? Yeah, I've heard, I've heard some, some mixed things. Um, but, you know, some people like the bluff too. Some people said it's good. They like his play. They like the aggressiveness. They like the style. But some people, and you know, it, you know, they don't bluff. These guys don't bluff. They never bluff the river in their life. Come on, <laughs> I mean, come on man. You know, they, they did it one time. They lost, and they decided not to do it again. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think I played okay. You know, honestly, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I think give me the jack four again. I probably fold, pre flop. Um, but you know, we only get to play the hands once, so you know, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna be too hard on myself. You know. Uh, you know, I made a few mistakes. I mean, I make I make like dozens of mistakes every single day. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm I'm okay with that. Like, I just think on balance, like I, I played pretty good, and you know, I it got me this far. You know, and whatever happens, happens. Also, I folded a straight. I don't know if you remember this, but, mm -hmm. but I, I folded I folded a straight. Oh, queen ten versus uh, yeah. what are you pocket nines? Like that. Yeah, king jack. The word was king, king jack, jack nine. nine. Jack. Jack. King jack nine. Jack six. Maybe something like that. Everything broke on the road. Yeah, and then you and didn't I make just, a big fold there. I just fold it like, no problem. Yeah, after five minutes. Yeah, I did see a little bit of that, of that hand as well too. So, yeah, I mean, you know, like whatever happens, I'm I, I'm still still pretty pretty happy with how I play. Yeah, in general. And you know, I've heard some people say like, you know, some people like Phil Hamilton didn't like my play too much. Okay, you know, but like Espandiari seemed to like it, so you know, you take what you can get. You know. Yeah, exactly. So. Actually, you know what was uh, um, a, uh, 
a, a sick sick needle was um, Anton was was posting some some uh, messages in the chat about how, what An Esfandiari was saying about my play, and uh, and he he put in quotations like, "Can I adopt this kid, Esfandiari?" Right, wow. and I was like, "Om," like that's amazing, and and then afterwards, and then he, he you know he posted a few other things like Esfandiari had said, and I was just like. And I said to him, like, well, that worst thing's worst. I can, I can just get Esfandiari to adopt me. And Anton was like, oh, no, he didn't actually say that. Oh, <laughs> oh that's fucking that's that's Come cool. on, are you going to slow roll? I got to say, being adopted by Antonio seems like a very fun thing right, for him yeah. to just spend some time with him. Very. Yeah. So shout yeah. out to Antonio. Definitely shout out to Antonio. He's very, uh, I like him a lot, man. Yeah. Uh, Susan Lane proposes a nickname, Jack Ambitious Three Barrel Sinclair. It's not quite got. Ring to it, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, we can, we can kind of work with them. So, I mean, ambitious, yeah, Jack, ambitious Sinclair. Yeah, I like I that, Jack, that. ambitious Sinclair. Yeah, but yeah, I guess I, 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 again, it's a bit of a tongue twister. Well, to tell people where they can follow you at out there, because you know, they're like, whether it's Instagram, Jack uh, Soros with four S's. We'll put the we'll put the link in the description below. You have Twitter, anything else like that at all? Uh, I think my man is setting up Twitter for me now. Yeah, um, so like, I have no idea what the screen is. Do we know? Do we have a screen yeah. name? Okay. All right, we'll, well put that. We'll put that in the description. He, as well, he's too. on the balcony, so like we'll, we'll put that in the description. But you know, so uh, I used to have Twitter. I like got eleven followers in a year, so I was like, you know what? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll take that down. So yeah, uh, so, okay. yeah we'll, we'll have an Instagram up. Um, sorry, a Twitter up soon. But we got the Instagram, and that's where I do most of my social media stuff. Okay. Well, I'm gonna be uh, doing. Uh, I'm gonna be doing podcasts. I think each day before the main event starts, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I think. I know, I'm know. i pretty sure me and Doug are going to do something tomorrow. And then I think we're going to go over to the Rio in a little bit. We're going to get um, Blumstein on, too. We're going to talk with him for a little bit as well and have a little chat, kind of get to know more about him as well. I think that's all we're doing for the main event, right, Jonah? That's it? And then we'll be at the main event. We're going to go over there and watch it. We're going to be in who's, Jack's... Who's rail you on? We're going to be in Jack's rail. We got to, I mean, I don't know, man. Listen, man, we're supporting the most epic night celebration in the history of the WSOP main event. And uh, I don't know, man. You know, it, I think it would be a fun time. I'm excited for you, man. Congratulations right. again, buddy. Cheers, Jay. Congratulations Cheers. again. Guys in the chat, much love everybody for tuning in. Shout uh, out to chat. Shout out to everybody <laughs> out there, man. You guys are great. And I'll be back later this afternoon. That's it. Much love. Yeah, actually, make sure you smash the like button, guys. If you're here right now, you got to smash, smash it. Smash it. Smash the like button if you like to watch poker. That's it. You want those shares? Share, share it too. Share Tell everybody. Favorite. Tell everybody you like. Know. Favorite. Subscribe. Share. Yes. Print. That's Wait. it. Much love, guys. Tell everybody you know. Peace out.